Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Leon. In this video, I'm going to go over how to configure a controller using the GP2040C platform to utilize the cross-up layout. What the cross-up layout is, is you have dual directional inputs in that on one side you have a joystick, on the other side you have your eight action buttons, usually on the face of the controller, and four additional inputs. And it's where on one side I can use the joystick, on the other side I can use the left analog stick. But GP24C can let you utilize your left stick, your right stick, or your D-pad in any combination. So to start, you're going to unplug your controller. You're going to hold down the start button or the S1 button. And then once it's plugged back in, we're going to go to a web browser and we're going to type in 192.168.7.1 and press enter. Then once you do that, you'll see a message saying, welcome to the GP2040C web configurator. From here, we're going to go to configuration and then go to add-ons configuration. There are two options that we have to enable. One is called joystick selection slider. And then from there, we're going to pick whichever one of these options that we want to have as default. So for, for mine, I have it set for digital. And for dual directional input, you're going to have to set it as either one of the options, whether it's D-pad, left analog, or right analog. And to get it to where it works with the cross-up layout, you're going to set the combination mode as none. And the dual directional four-way joystick mode as unselected. So you can actually pick either one of these options if you want to. In this video, I'll show you something real quick that's pretty cool. I'll set the left, uh, the slider option for, by default as left analog, and I'll set the dual directional input mode as right stick. So here, I actually have a functioning controller that doesn't have a D-pad, but it has the left stick as the joystick and the right stick as the hitbox layout. So here, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And this is the first option. So the next option is that each of the four additional buttons have to be wired up with a pin and a ground. The grounds are set by default, so you're going to have to daisy chain all, all your ground wires together. But in order to get the pins, we're going to have to go back to configuration and go to pin mapping. Uh, now, by default, Pin 14 and 15 are set as the turbo LEDs, so they will say assign to add-on. There are two things that, that we have to do or have to check to make sure. The first thing is we have to go back to the LED configuration. Then from here, we got to set our LED, RGB LED configuration. Our data pin has to be minus one, so we have to disable that. Because by default, uh, the way it works is pin 28 is going to be your LED configuration. So we actually need a, a, an extra pin for this. Also too, and by the way, whenever you set that data pin as default, make sure you go to the bottom and hit save. Make sure that once you finish the configuration to hit save at the bottom to make sure the changes are saved out. The next thing we have to do is our, our peripheral mapping. Uh, sometimes you will see your USB as set as 14. Uh, that actually will it will lock those pins in place. So you want to go in, into that option as well and make sure that it's, it's unset. So again, once you do that, hit save and you see that it's already set up on mine. So I'm going to go back to the, the configuration and pin mapping again. Then from here, you'll see that I have four uh, dual directional inputs set up. So pin 14 is DDI up. Pin 15 is DDI down. Pin 22 is DDI right, and pin 28 is DDI left. So, so this is how I have mine set up. So again, I'm, I'm going to go through it just one more time. So we're going to go back to configuration, go to add-on, add-ons configuration. You want to enable joystick selection slider. You pick whichever one of these options that you want. I changed mine to left analog stick. And dual directional input mode, I'm going to do it as right analog stick. So I changed it from left to right. And I'm going to do combination mode as none. And dual directional four-way joystick mode is disabled. And I'm going to hit save. And then from there, just make sure that 
your uh, your peripheral mapping is unset, make sure that pin 14 and 15 are selectable. Also, to make sure that your LED configuration, if you do, if you want to use this with a Pico board, some boards will have extra pins, but the Pico board with all the the buttons I have, I'm not going to be able to actually do anything else. So I have to sacrifice my USB configuration and my RGB LED configuration. So make sure that it's disabled. And then from there, I'm going to go back to pin mapping and make sure that I have a, a DDI for all four of, of my directional inputs. So once all that's done, I'm going to go back to the top and hit reboot and go to controller. So after that's done, I'm going to go back to my Steam settings and I'm going to test it. So off default, with nothing else changed, I have it to where my my uh, the joystick on my controller now is an analog stick on the left analog and now my dual directional input on the right side is going to be the right stick so you see now that I actually can play a game that uses left and right analog sticks now uh, you you probably want to maybe have four more buttons for the d-pads and I know some of the of the breakout boards do have additional pins and they allow for those additional settings but with the Pico board you are limited to how many buttons that, that you can actually have. Uh, you could probably get away with getting rid of a couple more buttons like L3, R3, uh, and maybe the uh, a touchpad option and maybe some other options. Also, too, uh, I have a three-way selector on my um, controller. Those are uh, two additional pins that, that you can get rid of. So ideally you can actually have all three of them if you get if you sacrifice a couple extra buttons uh so yeah uh let me know what you think in the comment section hopefully this was helpful uh if it was leave a like and a comment uh subscribe to the channel if you are new i'm gonna try to make a couple more videos like this uh i've been making arcade controllers and i had to figure this out the there's documentation for this but it didn't go into exact detail and I'm just showing you that with a Pico board, you are going to have to sacrifice a couple pins in order to make sure that, that you can kind of have all your additional buttons. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section. You have a blessed day and you take care.